But yeah, I would consider actually banning it. Um, it's getting really, really big nerfs, and it basically just neutralizes you. Like, I don't know if you find that when you play against Karma. How do you feel? Like, I'm generally happy just like. Okay, you're happy being AFK. I got you. <laughs> Understandable. Also, don't ever start call. By the way, just don't don't do it. Like, ever since they've changed the Doran's Blade items. Like, Doran's Blade is just 2 AP, you know, just gold efficiency-wise. You just get so much gold. Like, yeah, Cole gives you 300 gold later on, which is nice. But Doran's Blade literally gives you, like, 250 extra gold worth of stats at level 1, you know? And I would rather have 250 gold worth of stats extra level 1 than have 300 gold refund in 12 minutes or 10 minutes, right? It's just better. Like, I, I've just... But a lot of the time, like you saw in the previous game, by 15 minutes, the game's over, you know? And if you had that advantage in the early game, maybe you could have impacted that the outcome but um in case you have volleyball as well you have really good draft here like you have pretty good champions in every role it's not no teemo jungle from last game um just try and get into the habit if i have an ap jungle yeah 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 that makes sense but if you have ap top like this game it's still a great tris game like uh also nami does quite a bit of ap damage but just i want you to get into the habit on trist is just parking yourself in this bush this bush is just so good you see the one that I'm doing in the minimap? Is the minimap too small or you can see it like uh, on the YouTube? It's fine, right? You can see what I'm yeah, drawing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So basically the goal is that you just never, um, you never want to walk past the creeps. You always want to kind of like use the creeps as your shield, yeah, as I your wanted, buffer. I wanted to bait out the Q. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first time he tried to bait it out, but he didn't buy it. But it also just comes down to um, what you got to do is you got to like walk up. You see how like right now the creep is oh, shit. So like that would have been a good time to bait it because you can you can cancel your auto there instead of autoing it. You can click back, which I think is what you did kind of. Oh no, you didn't. Yeah, I mean that creep is just gone unfortunately. That's all right. I mean it's just common things. I wouldn't worry about it too much. This champ is just fucking UMP level one man. It's unbelievable. Disgustingly broken. And I like your camera as well. I really like your camera. That's what I do as well. I think that's that's actually a really high level thing. Don't center your camera when you lane. Like make sure that you put your camera closer to where the threat is, which is here, right? So it's this is really good camera positioning. I'm a fan of that. What's the enemy jungler? You haven't pressed tab much. So pressing tab more helps a lot because if you press tab, you can actually see people's items. And that's like really, really important, especially for junglers. So you can see CS. Like if you press tab and you see that enemy jungle had, you know, 12 CS, that gives you info about potentially where he could be. So I think spamming Hecarim. tab. Hmm? I think it's Hecarim. Mm. I, I, don't, I don't remember. It was like... Okay, yep. So you go for a ward. So this is like a little bit, like try not to do that because try not to go for wards that are that far away. Um, it's really good ward timing though. Like I'm happy with the ward timing. You've kind of killed the wave. Like this is exactly what we want to ward. We want to ward when the next wave is just moving in, right? Because it's not doing any damage. So that's perfect timing. But just make sure, you know, the rule of thumb, like when the creeps meet in the middle, you got to be there to hit it. Otherwise you're going to lose push. So pretty much like at this point, you already need to turn around because the creeps are about to be in the middle. Like they're about to meet and karma is already going to start hitting it. So you don't want to do a ward that's going to make you lose your lane because you're not going to hit, you know, the, the level up fast enough. Uh, so just make sure that you just place a ward like here. Like all you need to do is just see this entrance, right? And then like this and this. These are the only two gank paths that you need to see. So you can achieve it with a ward like this or even like this. Like just like anywhere here, you'll you'll be able to be able to see it. So don't go too far. Don't go too far forward. Um, so that she doesn't get push on you. But that's okay. Pretty easy lane. Just make sure that you always kind of just spam your Q in lane on Tristana. Just keep using it. Like if you don't think you're gonna find a trade opportunity, you can. Okay, it seems you put two points in your E. Don't ever do that. That's pretty troll. Was that a misclick or was that a misclick? Oh uh, no. I, no, I just max E like friend it, max E. Okay, okay. Well, make sure you always put a point in Q level three because if okay. you don't, then like you just physically like the Q will give you more damage on your E than another point in E because the Q will give you one extra auto on your E at least, maybe even two extra autos on your E, and you'd rather have a level one E where you've autoed four times than a level two E where you've only ordered twice, you know, because it'll just do more damage. So, and also if no trades happen and you've put a point in your Q, you will just passively push the wave faster. So just make sure you put a point in the Q level three. It's really important for getting your jump off and getting the trades.
this goes back to my video as well. Like you can see that your volley bear might be ganking mid. So how do we know that volley is going to gank mid here before he even comes? Like how do we know? What can we see? There's nothing else. Yeah, there's leave. literally, there's literally, bro, not even in there. Like we even seen their jungle. There's nothing up anywhere. So he's either going to go top or he's going to go mid. But because you can see like this is pretty gankable, right? He's in the middle of the lane. Uh, you know that he hasn't watered this bush because you haven't seen him go there, right? Like if you saw that he watered it, then you could ping that the area is watered. You know that Karma hasn't watered the bush. He's in the middle of the lane. Your volley bear has nothing else to do. So what should we do? What should we do here to set up the gank? Tower tree. Like, I, I, I cannot walk to the other side. I yes, think. walk to the other side. Trading would be bad because if we trade here, what's going to happen is our W and our E are going to be on cooldown when volley bear is coming in. He's coming in and when, you know, five, you can't see the HP of the scuttle, but you could expect maybe in five or ten seconds he's going to do this gank. So you need all of your abilities to be up for the gank because not only is he going to be slowed by your W, but he might be also stunned by volley bear. He might be also slowed by volley bear. So you want your Q 100% to be up because you're going to get so much value out of that attack speed when the Karma can't move. So you need all of your spells to be up, and you need this karma to be on this side. So we just move to this side, like we said in the Z example, right? Like you're gonna, she's always gonna try and mirror you diagonally. So you just move to this side, karma will move to this side, and then when Volley's about to come out of the bush, not too early, when Volley's about to come out, then you do your jump. But here the problem is again, he's just playing too far away from Volley. Like it's just, it's too hard for Volley to actually close the distance because you're not looking on your map and you're not thinking about, oh, this gank is coming. You only realize that this gank is coming now. Right? Were you thinking about it before, or...? No, I, I think I was pretty p pessimistic. I don't think there's any way Karma dies. Oh yeah, but you can yeah. definitely get a flash. Like, if you just if you just go here, he goes here, you will definitely get a flash. Like, he will he will hug this side, and... Like, you just keep doing this to force him. Like, wh th where's the best spot for, for Volibear to gank? Like, where do you want Karma to be out of these three spots in the lane? I think one. Yeah, one, right? So like, first of all, but we can't force him here because we're literally standing there. So it's, so it's like a two, three step process. Like first we need to walk here and then Karma will walk into three, right? And then maybe we need yeah. to walk here and then maybe Karma walks into two. And then maybe we walk here and then Karma will walk into one. So you, so you actually need to spend the next 10 seconds, you know, nurturing Karma and actually making her do this like walk for the gank. Like you can do this. You can set up this gank without trading her, without pressing any of your abilities by just posturing, by just where you're standing. Her brain is going to automatically slowly shift her, shift her into that position that you want. But you need to think about that in advance. So one, where's my jungler? Is there a play like I have nothing to do? Can I trade Karma 1v1 right now? Probably not. If you jump in, you're taking the aggro right now 1v1, you probably lose that trade, right? You're going to get rooted. Um, she's going to shield and run away. Like it's not winning. So if you can't win your lane, we need to think about, okay, if I can't 1v1 this champ, what can I do to progress the game? You know, is there something else that I could do that could get me elite? And then you think about your jungler. Is there something my jungler is doing? Maybe I can leave and, and dive top right now. Because, you know, if Karma gets a 6 CS lead, who cares? I still can't jump on her. Nothing's changed, you know? She can't, she can't run through my creeps and go on me either. So just think about that. And then if you can start that mental, like, the checklist in your brain, okay, like, I can't win. Can my jungler help me or can I go side lane? Like if you can go through these three little three little ticks, most games there will be something you can do that is better than just hit the wave, wave for the next wave, hit the wave, wave for the next wave. Even the most boringest matchups, even against Vladimir or Cassidy, there's always going to be an opportunity for you to do something on Tristana because of how mobile you are, um, how safe you are from ganks, how easy it is for you to just play here and not care about being ganked even if you don't have a ward. Um, so this just comes down to that. I think Karma 100% loses her flash there if she uh, if she was on the correct side. Uh, let's see what happens here. So, yeah, I mean, there, there's just no gank here anymore, unfortunately. You try to get the W slow, it doesn't land. And the Hecarim's coming in. This is where, like, it's really important that you pop your potion right now. Because your potion could be the difference between you having to flash or not having to flash, right? The faster you pop it, the more HP you get. So as soon as you know there's going to be an extended fight, you have to pop your potion. Um, I didn't flash the route uh I guess yeah that was really... yeah you thought you you thought you could get out of range yeah it is what it is but also like if you think about it if you popped your potion here and you actually had doran's blade like we talked about that yeah. really you would just not even need to probably dodge this route like you would probably have an extra 200 health and then maybe maybe you can just walk out or maybe you can flash after they flash but, totally doran's dip. yeah that's all right it, it happens like sometimes things like that happen but <laughs> the greatest part is that you didn't run ignite you actually have teleport and uh also this is a pretty big deal like don't spend this this long in the shop you know just just try and practice like you have to trigger like the pain learning mechanism when when you experience pain 
you're more likely to learn because your body and your mind does not want to experience that again. So what I want you to do from now on is whenever you're dead like this on Tristana, as soon as you like as soon as you're alive, I want you to TP Insta. I want you to TP right now. TP right now and then press your shop and then try to buy something. Just fucking scramble. Just buy as many items as you can. Even if it's the wrong items, or even if you forget to buy, like I want you to do that. I want you to teleport here, and you were like looking in the shop, and you just press the buy too late, and you still have 700 gold. You haven't bought anything. I want that to happen, because if that happens once, it's never going to happen again, you know. But at the very least, if you like, if you experience that once, and you forget to buy items because you have this four second TP, and like you're scrambling, you can't find the right item, whatever, it's not going to happen again. But but the most important thing is that over time, like you buying items here, there's one melee creep I can already see died. That's the second melee creep that's dying right now to the tower. So you've lost two full melee creeps just for no reason, you know? Like, and if you think about it, this, this happens in 10 games in a row, that's 20 melee creeps that you've lost. So just make sure that like, these are the little things that you have to fix. Instant TP, and then practice buying the items. I'd rather you buy double daggers instead of double longswords, even if double longswords are better, but instantly TP, because those two melee creeps actually matter for your level six and for Tristana, you know, get, getting level six could just mean a kill opportunity. So yeah, that's a good habit to build. Uh, just instantly TPing as soon as you can and then buying the items. Um, but anyway, we're back in the lane. We know that she's going to TP as well, right? So never push the wave like this. Like just if you know the opponent is TPing, what you do is you move your camera to her tower and just make sure that she's TPing. Because if you hard push this wave, it doesn't actually like do anything. You know, you don't really get a turn because she's going to be here. And the problem is she could actually try and freeze. Um, And if she if she tries to freeze, then the next line you're basically here. Your wave is stuck here. There's three range creeps. She doesn't kill them, and you could die to a gank potentially. But otherwise, we just make sure that we press our Q every time the wave meets. As soon as the wave meets, we come to the wave. Just play diagonally, right? Her threat is the Q, her her like mantra Q. So just play diagonally and just press your Q and just hit the wave. That's all you can do on Tristana. But make sure to move your camera. Like you need to these kind of lanes where you can't really win the lane solo, you have to find other things for you to do on the map. You have to look around and see if somebody's low, if you can roam top, roam mid, contest the dragon, do something, uh, because obviously there's nothing to achieve uh, in this lane against Karma. It's just... Okay, cool, so you place that ward, that's great. Happy with that. Your teammate's doing the dragon. Hecarim's Genki bot, so you could consider going bot. But all of this, the problem here is, again, you just need to move your camera more. Like, you're just not... Like, you see Hecarim's Genki bot right now, right? But you also see, like, what do we say about roaming? Can we roam right now? Have we killed the wave when it's at our tower? I think it's gonna slow push to to me. Yeah, well, I mean, there's just a wave. Like, we, we don't have a turn. We, we haven't killed the enemy wave, so we don't have a turn. So here, like, you already don't have a turn to do this dragon. But what you should do here is you should... Your goal here... I go over this in my video. It's the grump, uh, the Grubs example. Your goal here is not to hit dragon with with Volga, with uh, Volibear, because yeah, you're going to... Yeah, just just don't let this guy walk in here. And as soon as you're 100% you're confident that this guy is not walking in here, like, as soon as you force them off, go back to your wave. Play for yourself, man. You're the carry, like... Go back to mid lane and hit this wave and just ping them back. You, you can see that the dragon's secured, right? There's no way it can get stolen. And whatever happens bot lane, chances are by the time you get there, it's already over. There's no guaranteed gold for you if you go bot lane. Uh, but what you can guarantee is that you're going to lose a bunch of stuff mid, you know? If Karma full commits to this roam and you stay mid, you're going to get one, maybe two plates. You're going to get one, two waves for sure. You know, that's, that's like a kill and a half. That's almost two kills, man, if you just stay mid. So early game, I want you to just never roam. Like just imagine a line. You see how each 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 lane has a line like this, right? So we've got each lane. Now just imagine halfway through this. This is the line where you can do stuff. So the halfway point, you know, add dragon and add grubs. This is where you're allowed to walk up to. And if there's nothing happening around this around this area in the middle of the river, if there's nothing happening in the middle of the river, you are not walking past there. Because if you walk past there, you will miss one wave, maybe two waves, maybe it's slow pushing uh, into the enemy. You're not getting any plates. It's just not going to be worth it early game. You're always better off staying in your lane, hitting the tower, pushing the wave, and just letting the random stuff happen. You know, it, Because 100% of the time, you will come out with more gold. And there's not going to be a situation where you walk bot and uh, hmm. you get nothing off the play. I like, think this is a great... I lost. Yeah, like, this is... A, look, this is a great example. Like, you've walked bot... And you got nothing. You got 25 XP, bro. Congratulations. You got 25 XP for the kill. 
like your game is over because now you know when you come back here this karma should chunk you for half hp because she knows that you're walking in you know and then your lane is like you're coming back to lane you're chunked or whatever so you both ended up losing like 12 cs so it's not the end of the world but in comparison to karma that was an even trade but in comparison to darius you're now behind you know you know what i mean because darius didn't go anywhere darius didn't leave so if there's going to be a point in this game where you're 1v1 against darius you are now just straight up two waves behind darius you're just weaker than darius because you gave up your farm oh. to try and help bot lane so it's not about your lane it's not about you your strength relative to your laner it's about your strength relative to the rest of the game to everybody else right because you can be you know you could be 80 cs to 60 cs a mid at 20 minutes and you could say i'm winning mid you know i'm up 20 cs because i'm 80 to 60. but then when the enemy rumble with 200 cs at 20 minutes comes mid he's going to one shot you and you will lose that game because it's a 5v5 game, you know, it's just, it's not a 1v1. So your goal is to be stronger than everybody on the map, not just your laner. And if what you're doing is basically giving up your own gold, which is what you did there, you gave up your gold mid to try and invest in your bot lane, that is just never worth to do on Tristana because you're the main, you're the main character, you know? You love animes, you're literally the protagonist on Tristana and, and you should be greedy, you should be selfish and you should be self-critical. You know, if you take all the resources, you got to carry. But until you start taking resources, like, how can you carry? Your champ just doesn't do damage if you're too poor. Um, you have no CC, you have really nothing to offer outside of uh, just being um, a damage dealer. Okay, so it's pretty boring. We, we haven't really done anything. I think the biggest thing that I would take away from this is uh, the turns thing, making sure that you always stay mid. So again, like, look, this wave is coming in. We can't leave. We can place this ward, but again, the rule of thumb, the wave is at our tier 1 tower, we have to start walking back mid. We have to turn around whatever we're doing, turn around, go back mid, catch the wave. Uh, make sure you're not losing anything. Then once you kill this wave, it's the same thing. You kill the wave, boom, now we have a little bit of free time. But it's not a lot of free time. Like, we have the free time right now from when this wave, from tier 2 to tier 1. This is how long we have, this this little period of time, which is like 5-6 seconds, you know? So we basically don't have any time to do anything on this wave. So we just stay stay mid, catch the next wave. I think this is the biggest concept for you, bro, because this will this will literally increase your CS, you know, by 10, 20% each game. You know, an extra long sword or two long sword, and that's that's the difference between getting a kill sometimes in a fight or dying because you're lower level. I think this is a really important concept. Um, to get your kraken, this is pretty nice for you that you get your kraken on the first base. You have your TP here, so you you're actually moving your camera, nice. But that karma be me to uh, yeah she did yeah yeah that, i mean that, depends that, how confident you are you do have kraken here i would have honestly tp'd here i think this is a double kill for you and then maybe you died of karma maybe not you know you know what happened because like i thought i finished my um call so i, I thought i had to go for a boost and then like i was confused oh yeah okay 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 i got you i got you yeah, I don't know. There's, there's some pretty good options here, right? You have that ward in the tri bush you could TP to. Or as soon as you see the Zeri E, like maybe you don't play Zeri, but Zeri E is a very long cooldown. You don't have to know how long it is, but you know that if you TP for four seconds, it's definitely not going to be up within four seconds. So you can just, like, you TP here, the Zeri is running away, she's running away, and then you just flash W on her, and she dies. And, you know, I would have TP'd here. I would have just tried to clean something up. Just because your lane is so boring, that's the sort of stuff that you want to happen um, so that you actually have a chance to impact the map. But even here, like, what's going on, bro? Like, look at your map. There's a ward behind them. You know that they're 1 HP. Like, why aren't you just TPing? What's, why are you, why are you looking mid? Just TP bot, this is double kill. Look, he's 1 look, you look there. He's 1 HP, man. Of course, he might recall in the bush. If he recalls in the bush, then we don't TP. So all we do is we just walk up mid, and as soon as we see him greed, we TP. If he doesn't greed, cool, there's nothing. We just, we just get our farm. As soon as you see that Zeria icon pop up and he's not basing, immediately just TP. Like anywhere, bro. That you have ward here, you have ward here. All three of these wards, he dies. Does not matter which ward you go on, and it's not just a single kill, right? It's a double kill. And then what's going to happen after that? You're going to push the plates. So basically, yes, you're going to lose some farm mid, but you'll get the same farm bot lane. You get a double kill, and you get plates. So these are the kind of plays where you're in a. If you're playing against a neutralizer champ like Karma or like, um, you know, like the Syndra Nico lanes where you can't really make progress in your lane. This is the kind of stuff that explodes the game, and you just have to look for the angles, you know? That, that's why you're taking but yeah. TP. But wouldn't that give, like, Karma plays and then, like... Yeah, 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 it will, but th that's what I'm saying. Like, Karma will push yeah. mid, but what are you going to do after killing Zeri? You're going to push bot. And which one of your champions pushes towers faster? Is it going to be, you know, you're going to get more gold from that. Or maybe you'll get equal gold, but you get the plus two kills. So, you just have to do it. And when you do this play, right, let's say that you've already TP'd right now, you're about to jump in.
Like, after you've killed them, ping these guys back. The Lucian needs to go mid to cover, you know? He can go mid to cover, but they have nobody to cover bot because you've just killed their bot lane. So that's all you have to do. Just TP bot, kill these guys, stay bot, ping this guy away. Tell Lucian to go mid. That's it. Play's done. And you've just solo won this entire game. This entire game explodes from this play because you get, like, a crazy amount of gold from the double kill, the wave, the plates, you know? And your Lucian doesn't mind. He just goes mid, he catches the wave. It's not a problem. So this was probably the defining the defining yeah, mistake uh, of this game. And also, whenever you have TP, like... Let's see. What happens here? So you do, you do the dragon. You see there's a fight going on. But it looks very losing. Like, there's three champions here, and we only have two left. So we just need to jump away, make sure we don't get hooked. That was pretty, like, just lazy. Like, what's... What's the point of ulting this guy? Like, just W A. You're gonna have to W A away regardless, so that was a little lazy. Like, even if he doesn't slow you there, he's still gonna catch up with Ghost, so you had to jump earlier. But, um, that's alright, it's whatever. Yeah, that's not really a fault. Like, like get one shot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not really a fault. But the thing is, like, it doesn't matter if you get one shot or you get chunked, it's the same result, like, you can't lane. Even if you're one quarter HP, you still can't catch that wave, you still have to base. Same as if you die. Okay, so you're looking for a play bot. Again, just not a fan of this one. Like, whenever you're... What's what's the rule of thumb? Where's that wave? Uh, is, like, right now, you're going towards Hecarim. What's the line? This is the line where we can affect stuff. Where we're allowed to affect stuff. Halfway in the river. Is Hecarim on that line? Yeah. Yeah, he is. So you can go and kill Hecarim. Fair. But now you see there's two people there. So what do we do? Where's that wave? Our wave's here. Go get the wave. Force them back. You are not together with your jungle. If you go in here, one of two things is going to happen. Either these guys in river are going to get 2v4 because there's two champions in front of you here and there's two champions below them. So either these guys are going to get, you know, a love sandwiched and you're not going to contribute anything because you're flanking or these two, these two brothers are sitting in this bush and they're just going to go on you when you walk in. So there's no good answer. So whenever your lane is roaming on Tristana, I don't want you to follow it. Especially... If you have some items, maybe early game you can consider like, yeah, okay, I have like, you know, I have like a couple daggers and a longsword, and even if I stay mid, I'm not gonna get many plates. Bro, you have a full item. If you hit this tower, it is two plates minimum, without demolish, without anything, you will get two plates. That is a full kill. Like two plates in a wave is more than a kill. So just get out of this bad habit of following some dumb calls by your jungler. If you win this fight, what are you gonna get? What's the objective? Yes, there's fucking nothing there, man. There's nothing to get. The objective is here, and you can get it for free right now. You can get it for free because the enemy the enemy team has run to the side with nothing on, nothing available, nothing up. They're just committing their resources to nothing. And the punish is a free objective here. A free double plates, maybe three plates, half HP on this mid tower. This is the objective, and you can get it without killing anyone. And they cannot get anything, regardless of whether they get kills. You know? So just think about the game this way, like, how do I progress the game in early game as Tristana? I can stack dragons, I can get Rift Herald, or I can break towers. If what you're doing is not contributing to those goals, then probably there's something else you could be doing instead. So really ask yourself this in the game, like, if we get this kill, what can I get with it? Can I break a tower? Can I get a dragon? If I can't, then this kill is probably just not worth it. If we don't have a turn, if our wave is... You know, if our wave is not at the... If we didn't just kill the mid... If you've already killed the mid wave, then you could consider following, right? Because you've... But if you haven't gotten a turn, if you haven't killed the wave, the wave is at your tier 1, like we talked about, just go back to mid. All good. Whatever happens, happens. You ping them back, you can do a couple danger pings, you can you can type in, you know, go back, whatever you want, but you're not going there. You know what's best for your champion. Your champion is a carry, so start playing like a carry, you know? Be greedy. Don't do the shit. Don't compensate. Who cares about your team? They're not gonna. They're not going to win you games. Like, this is the second example of this game where you spent two minutes getting zero gold. You know, the first example, you got plus 25 XP. And uh, this one, you didn't even get any XP, which is a little bit sad. Okay, so now they're bot lane swapped mid. Now, if your bot lane's really far behind, then you can stay in this lane. But your bot lane's actually ahead, so ideally you would want to actually match the lanes. Because it's hard for Lucian Nami to make progress into Karma, right? She just clears, clears the wave, and it's hard for you to make progress 1v1 too. So, like, you, you both have basically just 
can't do anything in your lane. So you want to let Lucian go mid here. And when you see this, right, you can see Lucian's walking mid already. Just go bot, you know, just run bot ASAP because you're, this is your wave. No one else can grab it. So um, it would have been better for you to finish your base. Why don't you finish your base? You're just a greedy pig. Well, what happened here? What's going through your head? Why did you cancel it? What are you thinking about here? I feel like I, I had to defend mid a, a bit. Yeah, but there's no wave. The wave's here. The wave's here. Like, there's no there's no urgency. Like, this is their wave, right? The waves are mirrored. You just saw this guy walking up and you wanted to kill him or something. But basically, this comes down to here. I'll show you how to fix this. You fix this right here. So you're in this lane. You're playing 1v1 against Zeri. You want to jump on her. But then you're like, hmm. I can't really jump on this guy 1v2. But I'm getting poked. So this is where your brain should start to realize this is probably not where I want to be because I'm just taking a bunch of free damage. I can't jump on him. I can't roam because he's clearing the wave faster than me. This is not where I want to be, right? Like, I've just lost half my HP for nothing. Get me out of this lane. You should be peeing your loose. You should be the one telling your Lucian to go mid because you're getting frustrated. Like, I would be getting frustrated because I'm playing Tristana and I can't get pushed. I'm getting chunked. I can't kill anyone. I feel like I'm just useless. I'm not a champ. That's all my champ does, you know? So just base, cool. Finish your base here. Just don't don't cancel bit base and spam your Lucian to go mid. Your Lucian can easily go mid right now if you tell him to. If you understand these concepts, if you're confident in your ability to to play a good macro game, you will tell people and people will agree with your suggestions. I guarantee you. They're not going to question you. They'll be like, oh, Lucian will be like, oh, wait, my lane's mid. That's not a bad call for me to go mid. But you need to initiate that conversation. You need to tell them, hey. I want you to swap to mid because you know that it's correct, right? You know that you can't make progress into these champs, so don't lane into these champs. Like, if you go into Darius right now, it's a pretty good lane for you, right? Look, he has magic resist, magic resist. You're happy with that. If you go into Karma, it's not the best lane for you, but it's at least neutral, you know? Um, at least you're getting neutralized. It's it's the guy with zero kills that's getting neutralized and not the, the bot lane that has all of your all of your early game power. You don't want to, to put your winning champion into a, a neutralizer matchup. Anyway, so this all pretty much stems from us not basing. And look at how much we lost bot, by the way. Like, we should have been bot right now to defend that bot tower. We lost that first wave bot. We lost that full tower. And uh, I assume Karma based and spent all that money. So we just gave Karma, like, a really, really fat recall just because we didn't swap our lanes. But that's okay. We don't get caught, caught up on what's happened in the past. We just think about the future. Let's see your buy here. So you bought what? You bought, uh, yeah, boots. Yeah, fair. Coalfield's boots. Makes sense. It's the best you could have bought there. You got a blue trinket, so that's already great. <laughs> Why are you lacing the dragon for me? <laughs> what should you do here? Hit the Hecarim, man. Like, so where's the threat, right? The threat's here from Lucian. But the Hecarim is not standing... If the Hecarim is standing here, it's a little bit harder for you because you're walking directly into the threat. But here, you can... You can move kind of away from the threat. Like, you're not running straight into Lucian, right? But you're running towards Hecarim. So just walk here and just start hitting this guy. Like, th there's no threat on you, you know? Like, so just just hit the Hecarim. Don't ever hit objectives on Tristana. Well, like, you can if you know that it's not a flip. But if it's a flip, don't hit the objective. Like, make the Hecarim tank as much damage from this dragon as he can. Like, it's just easier to fight. If Hecarim is like this, it's going to be a more likely fight for you to win. So why are you not just using this as a resource? Use this dragon as, as a way to... You know, this is an extra play on your team. And just hit the enemy champ. Because it's really important. Even just a couple of hits, it might feel like, oh, you know, Hecarim is shielded by Karma right now. Hecarim is shielded by Yumi or whatever. But, like, if you just hit Hecarim, remember, every stack you get, it's lethal tempo. So you're getting more attack speed for the actual fight. And if you can cap out, if you can get six autos on Hecarim before the fight officially starts, before somebody engages, like, you're now lethal tempo and you can... Dodge engages a lot easier, right? You've got longer range. You can also maybe uh, dash on on the Zeri if there's a if there's an opportunity because again you're longer range. So just think about an early like at the start of fights on Tristana, you just want to try and stack up your lethal. It's not about one shotting someone in a front to back. It's it's just about getting your lethal stacks and oh. making sure that you get the range. I have fleet. Oh, you have fleet. Oh yeah, true, true, true. You have fleet. Well, then you just hitting the Hecarim. I should, be, I should be hitting him regardless. Yeah, just hit him. I mean, it's better than hitting the Dragon, that's for sure. And obviously, you have to be assessing the threat, which is, again, something I talked about in my video. So, like, here, what's the threat? Who can engage when you here? Just the heck. Yeah, just the heck. And what ability does the Hecarim have to engage on you? Can you engage on you with E? Yeah. Well, not really. I don't think so. I think you'll ult him away if he runs at you with E. So, the only ability that you have to think about is his ult. That is the only thing that can engage you that you can't 
like run away from. You know, if Karma runs at you and tethers you, that you can run away from that. But this, that's the one ability where if he ults you and you don't buffer the ult, you could get E'd back into his team and that could could kill you. So all you have to do here is you're, you're right clicking Hecarim, but you're ready. As soon as you see his ult animation, you're ready to press W backwards and buffer it. It's a very easy buffer on Hecarim ult. Just, just press W backwards here. You know, because if you don't get feared here, it's actually really important. It's not just about like the damage that you take. It's not about the damage. It's just like if you're here right now, you're autoing him, you know? You could get three, four autos instead of just being standing still and, and being feared here. So it's not even about all the damage that you took. It literally just comes down to... Um, and you could also ult him away immediately as well if, he, if you're trying to defend your teammates. So I think that was just like a, a threat assessment thing. Like I'm hitting Hecarim, so first of all, get some free damage on Hecarim. And secondly, we need to assess the threats. There's only one threat, it's Hecarim ult. So what, how can you dodge Hecarim ult? Can you ult him away? You can't because it's CC immune. Can you flash Hecarim ult? You can. You can W Hecarim ult. So if you're confident, W Hecarim ult. If you're not confident, literally just flash Hecarim ult. Just flash it. Because if you flash Hecarim ult, that is their only engage. And Hecarim's in the middle of your team. You're all hitting him. You win. So that's just, and all it is is pre-planning, bro. It's not, it's not mechanics. It's not micro. It has nothing to do with that. Anybody who's 40 years old can do this. Like, it doesn't matter what your age is. You just need to think about what ability is the threat to you and what abilities you have to dodge it and just be ready to dodge it. If you, if you train your brain like that, if you tell your brain in advance that when you see this, that's the trigger, immediately press flash or immediately press W. I, I promise you, you will press it. Whether you're platinum or challenger like you can you can train that really easily by just thinking about it in advance and that would have been a nice fight you did get a you did get a nice shutdown on that 800 gold but unfortunately we're not very strong right now we need our our second item so pretty much when you're on when you're in this position on tristana where you just have a bunch of components you do not go to to fights you just sit side lane so think about like where, where is the enemy team going to be playing around do you think they'll be pop, top side or bot side for the next couple of minutes top side yeah, they're going to be topside. So we just don't go to where the enemy team is going to be because we are piss weak. We have useless items in every slot. So just go bot and just let your team die. Get this tower. Who cares? You just... This Wally Bear is coming bot. Ping this guy away. You know, just go away, Wally Bear. I want you to go top lane. I want you to die and buy time so that I can actually make progress on my side of the map. Get a kill. Here you see Zeri bot. Does Zeri have TP? Nope. So what should we do? Just take her wrong. Just go in the bush oh, no. and TP top as soon as you can. Just TP top because you kill this guy, you kill these guys, you immediately take Baron. The game is flipped. Like, if you ever see somebody's matching you without TP, as soon as you see them, well, first of all, ask yourself, can you kill Zeri? You probably can't because it's 1v2. Like, it's a little sketchy. So just, just TP here. The faster you TP to this play, the more likely you guys can get Baron, right? Because as soon as you're there, you've killed these guys faster, you get to Baron faster, you kill Baron faster. You know, it's very hard for Zeri to make it over in time to actually defend it. And, uh, yeah, like, you're not even moving your camera. Like, your whole team is dying. 3v4, by the way. They're 3v4, and if you TP, it's 3v5. This is this is the most, like, suicidal play, but this is the worst play you could possibly do if you're the enemy team. It is, I, I can't imagine a worse decision than setting your fed 80 carry Zeri with Yumi bot lane and then 3v5ing top. Like, they should immediately lose the game here. This should be three kills for you into Baron. If you just move your camera and actually TP there and not worry about things that don't matter. Like, as soon as you see the Zeri bot, first question, can I kill the Zeri? And if the answer is probably not, then you want, like, you shouldn't spend any of your brain thinking about angles to jump on Zeri or can Zeri kill me? Like, there's just nothing there. Just walk away from her. There's nothing to do. Your whole focus should be on top. Where do I TP? Who do we need to kill to secure this objective? If we kill Darius, is this a free Baron? No. So we need to make sure the Hecarim dies in this play, right? We need to kill Hecarim for the for the Baron. So that's that's all you should be thinking about. And I can't really tell. Um, if there's a replay, we can obviously look at what happened. Uh, but you basically just AFK bot and yeah, then your team died and you FF'd. So that's that's two points, two really big points in this game where you could have uh, you could have had an impact. And I think both of them the first one as well, where you didn't TP bot, right? It just comes down to you not moving your camera. Like, we need to teach you to move your camera. And I feel like this is an easy skill for you because if you just look throughout the lane, like if you just look, uh, if we just look on uh, maybe high speed, like if you actually don't play with locked camera. Like you are actually moving your camera quite a bit in the lane. Um, so I don't think it should be a problem. What's the problem here with this invade? Uh, not the right path. We want. Yeah, exactly. Like you should be here. 
ready to jump right from from over the wall um blind because right here it's just harder for you to you know like imagine you were here right now you could get a five-man jump and they wouldn't focus you right that's the most important thing is here as you're walking in they're all they're already all clicking you they're literally all five people see you right now and they're right clicking you but if you come from this angle they don't see you at all you know they, they don't see you they, they might use their abilities on teemo or they might use their abilities on milio so it's important that whenever you do these invades from either side you actually jump from fog make sure you jump from fog you know, or, or jump from here as well, at least from here. Just make sure you jump outside of their vision so that you don't start taking damage until you actually land, okay? Because here, the reason why you, you get one shot is because before you even landed, you already lost your bone plating in like 200 health, and then you get focused and... So it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, just make sure that you jump from fog. Make sure you jump over the wall if you want to do this invade. But the idea is correct. The idea is not bad. Um, if you... You did, get a, you did get a reset there, so we need to use our W again. Oh my god, it's a bomber. Oh... We used our W a bit too late, dude. That was a pentacle there. That was a pentacle there. That was again camera camera movement issue. Like, what the f is that movement, bro? What's going on there? You just you you uh, you flown yeah. to Nadia. What is that? That was that actually like that is what griefs the skirmish is like you moving your camera like that. Because if you saw these if you saw these guys like this, like your W kills the Hui, you just immediately go on this this guy. You will die eventually, but you, you will get four kills for your team here if you just keep if you just suicide like just imagine your malfight so be level one i want you to be willing if you're going to do this kind of cheese like i want you to be willing to just flash w to hit everyone as many people as you can flash w reset your w and die like that's what i want you to do if you can get two if you can get three w's in a level one skirmish your team will ace them i promise you three three is the magic number any more than three is crazy less than three is probably not enough because every time it's AoE 100 damage, and it's AoE like 2 seconds slow. Like, they're 60%, 1.5 seconds slow. It's crazy. So I want you to be willing to just throw your life away to slow everyone and get the kills for your team. Your team will clean this up if you just actually flash W'd and killed the Hui first, and you would have reset. Like, it would just be crazy, bro. I'm telling you, you would be sending me this game, not as I want to review it, but as a look at my level 1 quadra kill clip, you know? Like, I promise you. So just be a little bit more... Be willing to die. And when you play against Corky, it's a quite an easy matchup. So something you should think about, right? Because we got that a bunch of assists, we're going to hit level 2 off the first wave because we got that XP. So we need to be ready to jump as soon as we hit 2. So keep an eye on your XP bar. As soon as you hit 2, the minion that's going to give you 2, what we want to do, right? It's the same as we talked about. Actually, we didn't talk about it. I talked about this with a, with a Master Tier player. But um, you know that this, this minion will hit you, get you 2, right? So as soon as you hit 2 here, you want to initiate a trade. So instead of last hitting this minion from here, this is too hard to get a trade, right? So you want to make sure that your next click, after you, you prep the minion, so it's two autos to kill this minion, your first auto is fine, but then you want to start prepping towards the jump. You want to make sure that as soon as you hit level two, you're, you're in range to jump. And right now your jump is like this range, right? Like you have to be within the circle of Corky, anywhere around this, um, around the circle of Corky to actually do the jump, right? So you want to make sure that you actually move somewhere where you can make the jump, before he realizes you're about to hit two. Because right now, he doesn't feel threatened. He's not going to walk back because he sees that you're level one, right? So I want you to be able to get a really good level two trade every single time and min-max this. So make sure that before the creep even dies, as the creep is low, you're already walking forward, ready to jump, so that he has no time to think about, oh, this Tristana's level one. Oh, shit, this Tristana's level two. Maybe maybe the Koki will drop this creep, you know? Maybe he's more willing to drop the creeps because he sees that you're level two, or maybe he'll use his abilities to get the creep safely. You shouldn't let this happen. Um, you should always be in these winning matchups. Quarky, just any any sort of, like, weak mage early, like Xerath to Leah. Like, you just jump in level two as soon as you get the level up. But the only way to jump in is if you start closing the distance before you even hit two. That's the key. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Nice. Just be conscious of my level 2, getting level 2 early. Yep, and as soon as you get the 2, you want to jump in. You want to get at least one jump before you hit 3. Like, that's that's the metric that I want you in your next games that you go forward. If you are level 2, and you have not jumped once till level 3, just FF. Like, you should always be able to jump at least once and get a trade. Now, once you get really good at it, if you jump straight away as soon as you level up, then by the time you hit, like, 2.5 your W is back off cooldown again, right? When you're halfway to level three, your W is back off cooldown, you can jump again. So you might, if you're having a really good game, you actually get two jumps, two jump combos between level two and level three. That's what you want to aim for, but at least one. If you don't have a single jump trade 
between level 2 and level 3, you're just missing out because you are one of the strongest champs level 2. There's almost nothing in the game that beats you. Maybe like an Akshan with Ignite, you probably don't want to jump into that or a Cass, Cassio, but most other champions, you want to initiate that trade. Otherwise, you're just not getting um, value out of your champion's uh, identity. So, Also, this is an easy lane, right? Don't ever take fleet into shit champs. Like Corky is, you know, he, he buys coal tier, bro. Like this champion is so weak early. <laughs> So just go fleet, okay? Because fleet is just, you know, if you look at the fleet, the, the amount of gold you get, fleet is like 1,300 gold or something worth of daggers or, or 1,500 gold even uh, max you mean, rank. You mean lethal. Yeah, yeah, lethal, lethal. So whereas fleet is just sustained. Like fleet does not give you more damage. It gives you maybe an extra auto, but fleet is just straight up extra gold. So if, you, if you're not going to be pressed in this lane, if you're not going to be poked, and you're really not going to be poked by Quarky, I mean, what's his poke? It's just his ult, but you can just stand behind creeps. It's not really... Uh, not really a problem. Um, okay, so you finally get a jump. Again, it's that issue from the previous game, right? You, you make the jump. Like, f first of all, you're level three to level four, so this is a little bit of a sketchy jump. Even though your champ is stronger, you'll still win this. Um, and also, you don't have Doran's Blade. Like, I feel like a lot of these games, if you just have Doran's Blade, these trades will be winning. But you're level three to level four, but you need to walk with them. You know, if you really believe that you're going to win this trade, walk with them. If you don't believe that you're going to win this trade, then don't start the trade, you know? You're level 3 to level 4 with a coal. Maybe you shouldn't go for it. Maybe you should just wait for your level 4 so that you're equal, um, equal oh, yeah. ability points. Okay, I like this. You know, this is the strength of Tristana. You want to look for, for skirmishes. Don't ever do that, by the way. So, like, when you're in a position like this, this is such a common mistake for low elo, is that people think, like, okay, this guy's low. I need to run the closest direction, like, the, the closest, take the shortest path, to, kill, to get the skill. But the thing is, if he's a human being, this is his vision range, right? This is how far he can see. As soon as he sees you, what do you think he's going to do when he sees a full HP Tristana running at him? Get the fuck out. He's going to get the fuck out, bro. He's going to run away. So we cannot walk into his vision range if we have no way to close the distance. And the only way you could close this distance, this is our jump range, right? If we're here, is if we have flash. If we have flash, then we don't care if he sees us because we're going to just immediately flash, jump on him, and we'll get the kill. And then maybe we'll jump on any again. But we don't have flash. So in that case, we have to be creative. We can't just take the shortest path because the shortest path is not going to get us the prize. We have to be creative. So how can we how can we get on, on top of him um, without without this, right? Fight. Yeah, just go here and stay out of vision because then he's most likely, you know, he's going to fight fight your Nocturne or maybe even after he kills your Nocturne, he might just walk back into his jungle like this and you'll be able to get close the distance. So find something creative, find a wall to stand behind, some some way to actually like, like this guy just this guy this guy is literally out. Like he's out, and then he just flashed. He's out. You cannot kill him. But then he just flashes back in. So, the, and this is why I think it's really important to review your games because in the game you might have been like, oh, I did a good room. I got a kill. But actually, the room was terrible, and you should never like the room was good, but the execution was terrible because you didn't think that he would run away, which he should just run away. And if you get to you know Emerald Emerald One Emerald One player will always run away there. You know this is just a like. And you have to build these habits early on. So just try and uh, not, don't just judge the play by whether it worked or not. Think about the actual like, did I make the right decision? Did they make the right decision? Is this a high percentage play? Because your goal isn't to win this game. Your goal is to play 10 games with the same decision making framework and to win 7 out of 10. You want to make the high percentage decisions and you don't care about those three games. In those three games where you made the right call and somebody made their own call and it didn't work out, it's all good. Like it just happens. You don't need to win every single game you just need to win you know 60 60 percent to climb 55 percent to climb so anyway you tp back you did a good roam you got a kill life's good this is great you stop him from this is just something to think about as well like you know for a fact that as soon as you jump what do, what do you think he's going to do yeah he's going to run away so like we shouldn't be jumping to where he is now we should be thinking about where is he going to be in one second when my jump finishes he's probably going to be here you know so if we just jump like this, then he might actually insta W like into your jump. He will literally W into you, you know. So you want to be ra landing like this, so that if he keeps walking backwards, you'll you'll hit him. If he Ws, you'll still hit him. So just think about not just what's on your screen, but what's going to change. Like think about how his position is going to change in the next two seconds, three seconds, or whatever. So try and think in advance. That will get you a few extra autos here. If you landed the slow, I guarantee you would have actually um, uh, you would have actually gotten the full four orders off and uh, got a nice trade but the idea is correct right it's all about the little things that you need to change uh, that are going to get you like these uh, hp leads the, these little chunks um that will all add up in the long run the idea is correct 
Okay, we're just farming, we're chilling. There's nothing really for us to do. You have a lot of gold. So I think when you're when you're looking like this, um, when you have over a thousand golds on mid, I would say a thousand golds, you should consider basing. All right, because if you stay on a thousand golds, then remember what I said last game, like it's not about you being against Corky. Like Corky is probably on a thousand gold as well. You know, maybe he's 1500. So actually you've spent more money than Corky because you've, you know, you have 1200 and he has 1500. But what happens when... You know, the enemy jungler who has zero gold and he spent everything walks mid. You know, this guy, like right now, you probably have, like, how many, how much gold do you have? You have about a thousand gold spent, right? You have a thousand gold spent and then 1265 unspent. So your total gold is like 2265. But you've, you're actually only strong, like, strong. You can only use a thousand of it. But what if the enemy jungler walks mid? Actually, it's it's 1.1k, right? Because of coal. But if the enemy jungler walks mid and he spent all of his money, let's say jungler has, like, tabbies plus serrated dirk. Like, he literally has double your gold, or 2100, double your gold, and you just can't beat him. Like, you can't you can't play any fi any fights or any objectives where the enemy support is involved, the enemy AD is involved, the enemy top's involved, if they've spent more money than you. So, when you think about spending money on mid, it's not about your lane. Like, it is about your lane, but it's about what you can contribute to stuff that happens halfway, to stuff that happens in river, to the skirmishes, to maybe a top dive, or if your jungle is getting invaded on the, you know on his buff like you want to be strong enough as strong as you can be at that point in the game so that you can guarantee get the kill and the enemy is not running away at, at 100 health because you didn't have enough long swords to kill them you know if you had the extra two long swords three long swords they're dead so just make sure that if you find yourself in this position you have a lot of gold we should base right so which wave should be based on should we base on a normal wave or a cannon wave yeah, yeah cannon so like you have to just kill this wave you know you have a lot of gold so instead of thinking about roaming Instead of thinking about killing your laner, as soon as you have over a thousand gold, between one thousand and fifteen hundred gold, your only question, your first question, the most important question is, when can I base? I need to base ASAP. Here, he's already teleported. So now you're not even just weak relation to the rest of the map. You're actually weak relation to Corky as well because he's just spent all of his money. Um, so yeah, you just need a base, look at the next wave, move your camera. Remember, the camera movements are very important for you. Check the next wave. If it's cannon, we're just going to run away and we're going to base. That's it. You know, that's simple as that. And then you can actually contribute. The problem is, because you didn't do that, we have to we have to now wait for the next cannon wave, which the next wave, so it goes cannon, then it goes normal wave, and then it goes normal, and then it goes cannon. So you're basically stuck for two waves where you can't recall. If you don't base in that cannon, you have to stay for another one minute, a whole minute, one minute. You have to just be a burden to your team where you can't contribute anything to anyone because you have a coal a dagger and a longsword you know like you just have nothing you're not really a champion unfortunately i think all of these issues regardless of the matchups it's all kind of comes down to number one is basically spending gold spending gold this is an issue that you have you don't spend your gold you have over a thousand so one thousand gold one thousand to fifteen hundred gold look to base on cannon i would write this down this is your number one issue this is what you need to fix it's very easy to fix number two is camera movements like when in base or um after pushing a wave move your camera to to the side of the map you want to roam uh, yeah yeah i mean i think that's pretty much it i think these are really all of your issues i don't think there's too much there's too much more to think about the thing is man these these habits said like they don't just they don't, they're not going to be capped at Emerald, you know, like you can, these are the things that you need to hit master. It's just like, once you fix these, we can move on to like more in depth or different issues that pop up. Like this is just the most glaring things that are holding you back.